What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are doing another Bandai Godzilla unboxing. And as you can see today, we do have a very special Godzilla unboxing as this one is a very rare figure in the Bandai Godzilla line. We do have the Bandai 1968 Godzilla for you guys today. So stay tuned, we're gonna unbox this guy and take a closer look. So once again, my name is Matt and this is the Pop Complex. Welcome back guys, once again to the Pop Complex. Again, today we are unboxing another Bandai Godzilla figure. We have the super ultra rare 1968 Bandai Godzilla. So as you can see here, uh, we do have the typical uh, Bandai opened, open air style packaging for this guy. We have the Bandai logo here. We have that classic epic Godzilla logo here. Nothing here in the corner as we have seen in previous releases. Uh, of some of these Bandai and Playmates figures, but we have the 1968 Godzilla. And here on the front, we do have, as you can see behind him, he has leaned over a little bit, uh, but you have the Godzilla logo and the classic uh, Japanese okay. characters. And over here, we have a still shot of the classic 1954 Godzilla, as we've seen on the previous packaging. Uh, but again, the box is that open, hollow, open air on the bottom. Flip it around to the sides, we see again the picture of that epic Godzilla logo on both of the sides there. And then let's take a closer look at the back of the packaging here. You can see the Godzilla logo there and the King of the Monsters there himself, but we'll take a closer look at him out of the packaging. If we flip it around to the back here and take a closer look, uh, we do have the Millennium Godzilla, which I did also unbox here on the channel. Link will be in the description and a card up here in the corner. King Caesar as well. And we also have the 1954 Godzilla, which will also be here on the channel coming up soon. But we also have unboxed King Caesar here on the channel. So bring this a little bit closer in so you guys can see again, we have the uh, manufacturer information and the legal information, the barcode. And we do have the classic uh, uh, picture logo of Godzilla and King Caesar right there. Again, the barcode information. So flip this guy back around. As you can see the face here on the 68 Godzilla. Uh, so guys, we are gonna get this King of the Monsters out of the package and take a closer look. You don't wanna miss it, so stay tuned. All right, and here we have the classic 1968 Bandai Godzilla, the classic late Showa era look. Get a closer look there at the face. Nice detail there on the eyes and the teeth. Uh, pretty decent looking for recreating the likeness of the 68 Godzilla, which would be the destroy all monsters era. Uh, the late Showa era and some of those early 70s films as well. Uh, really good likeness. I like the fact that the skin on this guy is that very dark, dark charcoal gray, uh, almost uh, making Godzilla look, uh, look like he has the black skin, uh, but very dark. Again, that classic Showa era look, which is so iconic and so popular. Uh, not as menacing or ferocious looking, of course, as, you know, some of the later iterations of Godzilla or even some of the earlier, uh, like the, of course, the classic 54 uh, had that more ferocious look. But I know at this time in the Showa era, the films were really geared toward, uh, toward a younger audience, toward children. Uh, so Godzilla during this time did look a little bit less uh, threatening than in some of the earlier and even later iterations of the king himself. So again, we'll take a closer look at the detail there. We have those classic Showa era eyes uh, and sort of picking up again those uh, kind of cat-like features of the late Showa era. I know some of the iterations in uh, let's say the King Kong versus Godzilla the 62 
kind of looked a little bit more amphibian, kind of frog-like in appearance, but this is kind of returning to those uh, kind of cat-like features. Uh, but we'll take a closer look here at the dorsal plates. Nice classic look there uh, that go in those three rows all the way down uh, to the end of the tail. So let's take a look at the articulation. Uh, first of all, we notice that unfortunately, there is no articulation in the neck. So the head is stationary. It cannot move from side to side, which is slightly disappointing if you wanted to uh, pose this guy kind of looking to one side or the other from an angle. Uh, but then again, the pro of that would be that uh, there is no cut there to kind of ruin the illusion. So it looks better aesthetically if you're gonna pose him straight on, looking straight on. Uh, but again, we kind of lose the ability to pose and to kind of get uh, either a left or right look there. Uh, the next points of articulation are in the arms. So the arms are articulated here at the shoulder. It's just a basic 360 degree swivel. And if we kind of bend it, yeah, we can get 360 degrees there on this arm and not quite on this arm because of the way he, he is constructed there, his body will not allow for that movement. And especially here in the front, he cannot go down any farther than that with the way that his elbow is sculpted. So then we have the legs here, the, the thigh articulation kind of comes up to give him more of a more of a straight up and down stance there, kind of not as hunched over if we kind of bend those legs back a little bit like that. Looks very nice, but uh, it looks like the legs can get a full 360 degree rotation there um, on both legs, yep. So it's a basic thigh swivel there. And then the final point of articulation, of course, is there in the tail. You can see the cut right here. So we get a full 360 degree rotation there. But of course, again, with the way that these are kind of pre-sculpted, pre-posed, uh, not to ruin that illusion, but the tail does look uh, the most natural sitting flat on the ground and the dorsal plates do line up really well. So we can kind of give him a, a little bit of a, a arms up kind of pose there to bend his legs back a little bit so we can uh, kind of get more of a more of a better pose there with him standing rather than hunched over standing up straight uh, but this guy does look pretty good amazing and again he is one of the rarer uh, of the bandai playmates godzilla figures in this line he was really 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 super hard to find and i got him at a really good price uh, just happened to luck upon someone who was selling him on eBay uh, for a decent price. So got really lucky with this one. Great addition to the collection. I love that classic Showa era look. And again, we'll take one more look at the dorsal plates and the skin there and the color on this skin. I really love this 68. Looks really, really nice. So guys, there we go. We have the 1968. Bandai Godzilla representing that late Showa era. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Also check out the description of this video and check out my other Godzilla unboxing videos. I've done quite a few of the Playmates and the Bandai figures, so check those out. Don't forget to hit that like button on this video, share it out to all of your fellow Godzilla fans and Kaiju lovers. And also please hit that subscribe button, guys. It doesn't cost you anything and it really helps the channel out channel is really growing right now and I cannot do it without support from all of you guys so and as always check out patreon.com forward slash the pop complex and you can support the channel monetarily there if you should choose thanks for watching guys and have a monstrous day